Hey everybody. Um, uh, there we go. So I'm going live right now, and I'm working on this Kylo Saber, which is for Thomas. Uh, he wanted it converted from a regular red Kylo to a deep red Kylo, so I've converted it to a deep red Kylo. I'm just finishing up now, and I'll turn it on, and we'll compare. I don't know how well you'll see it on this camera, but we'll compare between this uh, deep red and a regular red Vader Saber, so you can see the difference. Um, I will not be streaming tonight because I have something else going on, but I will be streaming tomorrow night with Sarah, our Kylo up here. So um, for those of you that were looking for the stream, that'll be tomorrow night. This is an impromptu stream. Um, yeah, and if you want to see more about Kylo conversions, how to do one, kind of the whole process, I posted a video earlier today. I'll link it in the description after this is done uh, about how to convert a whole Kylo Saber. This one, I'm just replacing the LEDs with, um, with instead of regular red Cree LEDs, this is gonna be a deep red Cree LED now. And I gotta adjust this a little bit because it's a little low. So, I may not get to a lot of questions. Um, waiting for my iPad to charge a bit still. Hopefully, it'll charge soon so I can turn it on and actually interact with you a little bit. Um, but, because this is a deep red, I have to uh, I have to convert it. Um, also convert here. This is the soundboard. If you can see that, um, because I need to run all three LEDs in the main as full power, and I only need to run these side two at about half power. So I'm putting the side two together. Um, to run off the same amp and then the three main ones will run separately and that way it'll be more uh, a little bit even more even spread across on the board um, amps as far as power goes so you're gonna need help with your mall saber Cade yeah I bet you will uh, we'll have to talk bud and let's see I gotta try and get this off give me a second here everybody I'm gonna try and Uh, oh, that's why. Dang. Uh, let's see. No, this is going to be really hard to get this off. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, getting there, soldering like this is not easy, um, but can be done. It just it just takes a little bit of finesse and extra work. So, like I said, I probably won't be super interactive on this particular one because I'm trying to do this here. Let's see, that should work. Um, but hang around for a few minutes and you'll get to see this turn on and so I'm gonna pretend this here there we go I think I've had a little too much coffee today I'm shaking or I could just be really excited to be putting together a deep red tri Cree LED Kylo Saber again it's been a while since I've done one of these in deep red. Most most people like the red because it's the brightest, but um, okay. Let's see if we got that. Take that off. Um, uh, yeah, that looks good. Nothing like a little rewiring of everything real quick to make things interesting. Um, yeah, so on the Mall Saber, Kate, if you're still on, that'll be an interesting build because it's going to need two cards, basically two of everything because it's double sided, obviously. Um, still, can be done and can be done to look really, really cool. 
if uh, you know depending on how it's done but it will definitely take some work um, to get it done right like this where it's super bright so and if you're bored come back in about 10 minutes or so or just you know rewatch the stream and fast forward in a, in a little bit when it's done Cool. I guess I got it. So this particular board is a Spark Sound Two or Spark uh, Spark Two. Um, I I've used it, and I've used another one by a different manufacturer called the Prism, which also works really, really well for Kylos. Um, go that's what I like to see all right now put the switches back on and we should be good to go hopefully if I didn't mess something up in this process everything should be pretty set oh come on don't do that So essentially, I realized there wasn't really enough solder on some of these pads. There we go. That's better. Uh, anyway, got those done. One more. The positive lead to the LED, which uh, I'm going to stretch it a bit. There we go. All right, that should be everything. Now, put that in. Hopefully, I got it all set right. Put this on to protect the electronics from any possible shorts. Oh my gosh, it's so much. Almost there, guys. You want to see a Kylo Saber come to life. You want to see the whole process, which takes like a while. Um, you can check out my post earlier today, and you'll get a great, a good idea of how, how much work these things take. Kylo is not, not nearly as simple as some of the other conversions I do. Kylo takes a lot more time and a lot more work. Got it. There we go. Just 
that. Uh, this part might be a little loud on the stream. Actually, I'll move it. I'll do it over here. That way it won't kill anybody. There we go. There's a big pin here that you have to set back in really, really strongly because it kind of helps to, it holds everything together. And then I put a set screw there. Um, where's my right there? And I get these little side screws that are the things that come with the, the saber. Then these guys, I machine all these out and then tap them so they, it's kind of nice if I ever have to go back and rework on these, it's easy to take them apart. But the stock ones just come with a whole bunch of pins pushed through everything and that's it's a cheap easy way to do it because you can do it all by machine but it's not as not as nice as when this is done like this with a lot of set screws and stuff because then you can easily take it apart and put it back together relatively speaking Oh, wait, that's not even. Oh, dang. No. Mm. Shoot, this one went a little cross throat here. Okay. Let's see if I can jam all this stuff back in here. There's been an awakening. Have you found it? Yes. It's not the set screw. I don't have the side blades um, just because I asked him not to send them with this because I didn't want to mess with the extra size and the shipping and I don't really need the side blades so we'll use this shorty for today uh, yeah lots of fun all right I'm gonna turn some lights off and then we'll see how this looks compared to a regular red Actually, move this on. All right, here we go. Uh oh. See, that's a problem. This one's not lighting up. There's the deep red. Grab. And here, Let's 
see that still. Here's a regular red. So you can see the difference between the two. I actually can a little bit. It definitely, it's hard to tell on the camera, but you can see it a little bit. Anyway, when you put the two together, the deep red just looks so much more, it's so much more red than the regular red. The regular red starts to look a little bit more orange in comparison. Um, not that one or the other is better or worse. It's just more what you want. The deep red is a little bit, not quite as bright. Even with three LEDs driving and two as compared to what was in the Vader. It's pretty close to the same. So, now, troubleshooting, why, why that didn't, uh, the sides didn't light up. Lots of fun. Um, go here. Loads of fun, right? <sighs> that out. I'm going to figure out why these sides didn't light up. Um, let's see. I should be able to find. There we go. And okay, now I should be able to follow up with you guys uh, answering questions and stuff because I've caught, uh, got it on my iPad. So let's see. Red Amber. Uh, red amber looks really, really orange compared to um, the red, even the regular red. So, hey, Pastor Ron, welcome. Hey, Fantastic Raids. Uh, let's see. I don't. Will you supply the saber? Maybe eight hundred. I don't know what you're asking there, Yvonne. Um, yes, yeah, small guy. I'm having fun with this one. Let's see. Yeah, Evan, that's true. You can run one board so long as you uh, it's always coupled. Um, but I think he's probably going to want to decouple it from time to time. So we'll see. Uh, Pastor Ron asks, what's the going rate these days for Sabre conversion? Um, depending on the saber, it, it changes quite drastically depending on the saber. Um, a regular single bladed saber, like an FX saber, a black series saber conversion, those run usually between three, 250 and 350, depending on like if you want to just reuse the stock board and replace it, make it a convertible LE or a com removable blade and a uh, more, a much brighter LED. Um, when you get to let's see uh if you do the you know the higher end conversion where you're replacing the board and the speaker and putting a in-hilt rechargeable battery um those usually run in the 350 range and then uh kylo usually runs like um well for a basic conversion it probably runs about three 350 and then a full-on conversion runs about 500 or so maybe a little more depending on the options you want. And partly the Kylo takes a lot more work because you end up machining these out so that they'll hold a standard size blade. Um, you end up machining a bunch of other little bits and pieces. Um, and then it's, it's a lot more wiring and you have to get higher end, not higher end components, but a, um, a higher end card so that it'll run all of the LEDs because you, uh, especially if you wanna do um, like flash on clash or something like that. And then there's there's a lot more wiring involved and a lot more other little odds and ends, which is cool. The Kylo Saber's cool um, until you have to figure out why some of the LEDs aren't lighting up, which is a little bit irritating here. I think I'll start at this end, but can be done. I'm almost willing to bet that.
didn't get a good solder on that. there if I broke the connection there somehow so the mystery ah. um, you guys hear that noise that's those are f-22s flying over my house doing touch and goes at the base next door ah. this blade is my like test blade it's got a crack and stuff up here and it um, it's great except for it's really hard to get in and out because it's gotten kind of chewed up on the end I probably need to sand it down a bit so here you can see this is a rechargeable battery in it which is uh, I need to put some double-sided tape on or more because it is loose um, and they hit inhale recharge here and then the sound card which is not uh, not doing what it's supposed to do. So we're going to do a little troubleshooting and see why, what happened here. See, that's, that looks good-ish. If the solder joint there got, God, I need my magnifying glasses. It's just too small. I can't see it. Try that. See if that was the problem. If not, it's something up here. Like. Has been an awakening. Have you felt it? Let's see. Yes. Uh, let's see. Kill it, kill it. <laughs> How fancy do you want? That's true. Um, you can go super, super fancy if you want to. Uh. Ground on C2 is loose. Uh, it wouldn't be the ground. It'd be the positive feed if it is. Um, but I don't... Uh, well, I'm hoping that was the problem. We'll find out here. Nope. Because C1 and C2 both have the same ground. Uh, let's see. The, what is the accurate... Fa de Legends asks, what's the accurate tri-key color for Vader? For uh, for most part, it's the deep red is the most accurate color. Um, yeah, so the deep red. That's what I have in my saber. Uh, the thing is that it just, um, you walk a fine line because the deep red looks great in person. It looks really, really good. It doesn't pop as well on photos in pictures with cameras. I mean, it still looks good. It just, it, it fades out much faster when you get into brighter light situations. So... Um, yeah, it's a little bit, it's just one of those, uh, one of those trade-offs. So, uh, anyway, but the deep red, the deep red looks really, really good in person. It looks really, really good. It just, you know, it doesn't quite hold up when you're, when you're, uh, when you're in brighter light as much now you can put it inside a day blade or one of the enhanced red blades and it helps but it's still it just it's not quite as not quite as good there i'm kind of curious if i'm getting yeah that's good there that's good there all right i'm gonna look at the other end of the saber here Let's see Let's see what sort of stuff we can find So let's see, Yvonne, you must work with sabers a lot. You sure know a lot about what you're talking about there. You're welcome, Pastor Ron. 
any time. Um, you know, that's the ballpark of what I generally charge. I don't know, some other guys may charge more, may charge less. It just, uh, you know, I'm sure, like anything, there's probably a super wide range of what people charge for different services and the quality of work and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of great, great sabersmiths out there that do fantastic work. Um, I got a lot of extra wire here. Let's see. Yvonne, True, you upgraded your Vader from with a red, amber, white after seeing a pick from a troop. Now the pixel looks like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I had in my Vader, I had um, just a straight up red Cree, uh, or not single, but like, a, you know, all of the dyes were red. And it showed up brilliantly in pictures. It was great. It looked like a real saber. Sometimes it was a little too bright for the camera. And then I switched to a deep red, which I love. I love the color of. Um, it does not show up nearly as well in pictures. And so I'm considering switching back to uh, the regular red. And then uh, I've, uh, I'm experimenting with string blades, which I think I posted a video about, maybe. I don't remember if I did or not. Anyway, so I'm likely going to end up with a string blade. The string blade, though, is like a red, green, blue, um, either individually LEDs soldered together, which I'm going to build, and then or a red, green, blue Adafruit strip, which I have two of, and I've been experimenting with those for now because I haven't had time to sit down and solder together 155 individual addressable LEDs. It just is uh, going to take some time to do that. Let's see here. Oh, I'm just getting, oh yeah, that. That's the hang right there. I don't know. If I can't get this, if I can't get this to do what it's supposed to do like this, I may just end up. Oops. May end up uh... see that's good. Hmm. I may end up just rewiring everything from the ground up start over. I really don't want to do that, but I might. Because, you know, it's got to work. So, there's that. Still getting good ground there. Let's see here. So, nice, I'm doing a couple for the Kylo, Kylo's down there, I'm curious, oh, that's why, uh, this will be interesting, I'll pull this whole thing out. Far enough to get the card in. And I should probably go ahead and stick this back on there while I'm at it. Because, you know.
Oh, I need my uh, multimeter. So I can figure out why I'm not getting voltage. Well, actually, so I can figure out where I'm not getting voltage is more um, accurate. So it has to be because those are both good connections there. All right, we'll work our way backward here. Let's see why I'm not getting any voltage to these two side LEDs. Fun ish, but not really. All right. Oops. And like I said, I may just wind up pulling all new wire for this thing. If I can't get it to, I can't get it to do what I, what I want it to do. Um, let's see, that's positive, negative there. So we got positive. Four volts there. Okay, four volts there, no volts there. On C2, let's see. Where did I see that? That might be the problem right there. Well, looks like I'm going to rewire everything. I'm getting voltage. I'm getting voltage, just not, not the, uh,
Ah, there's the problem. Found it! Yay! Well, I think so, anyway. Um, if I can put this back together without it all falling apart. Anyway, so I need to redo this jumper over here. Oh, right there. I think I got a cold solder joint. This is riveting stuff, isn't it? So let's see, catch up. <laughs> the splice on C3. So yep, it was the well, it's the splice on C4 because I've got C1, C2, C3 are all tied into um, the first drive channel, and then C4 is tied in for the two side blades, and it was the splice. I think when I was um, Pulling stuff off, I might have wrecked it a little bit. Let's see if I can. Holy cow. All right. Now then. Hi, Brian. Thanks for joining us, by the way. Nail biting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's sort of like watching paint dry. You could like live stream watching paint dry, I think. You know, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit more interesting than watching paint dry, but sometimes I'm like, I don't know if it's that much more interesting. The truth is, it's all working. I'm just doing this to add suspense to the stream here. Be it. 
Okay, we ready to try this? See what happens. Dun dun dun. See if I can blind the camera with this side. If it comes on, you guys will all know. Oh, really? Uh oh. Okay. <sighs> Riveting stuff, isn't it? Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, JW Pitbull. Uh, link to those parts in particular. Yeah, the Custom Saber Shop has lots of great stuff on it. Lots of good stuff on their forums, too. They've got a whole um, like step-by-step -step deal on their forums there. And yes, Brian is correct. You need to understand electronics, at least basically, and have a decent... Um, you, you need to be decent at soldering stuff, for sure. Or else you will uh, burn stuff up real fast. You'll let the smoke out of the electronics and the blue smoke cannot come out. Uh, nothing good comes from blue smoke coming out of the electronics. It has to stay inside. Or else it's all over. Once the blue smoke comes out, it's all done. So I'm getting voltage. I just need to something something I should, just, I should just rewire it completely from the ground up it's just a lot of wiring to do okay I'll never admit this on stream if I did, but if I just happen to accidentally wire these backwards, that would be... Sometimes it's the simple explanations. Uh, let's see. That, that. So, anyway, how about the weather? What's happening here? Let's see. Prism 5.1 or, yeah, Mark, you're right on. Prism 5.1 is great. I've got one sitting up here um, for my uh, string blade saber. And then uh, Spark 2 is great. That's what this is, is Spark 2. If you want the stagger ignition. The, the Prism 5.1 can do the stagger ignition too. It's just a little different how you go about programming it. So, but it can definitely be done. Hi, bud. Oh. 
Okay, I have not, but I'll tell you if I do see it. Yep. So you can do it yourself. Uh, let's see. Mark Hoofman is right. You can do. You can convert a saber yourself for about a hundred, hundred something dollars in materials, so long as you have um, a little bit of know-how with electronics and some soldering skills. You can do it. Kylo saber is a little bit. You can still do it. Um, it's a little bit harder, just because if you want to be able to like attach a, a regular blade into the side blades, then you have to machine them out a bit basically drill them out um, which isn't that big a deal I use a drill press so it makes it kind of easy uh, but if you want um, you can reuse the side blades that come with the Kylo Saber the stock ones just cut them down a little bit and it'll work just fine yeah this is going from bad to worse my soldering job is getting worse oh my that's just terrible look at that it also is not a good idea usually to try and solder on a heat sink because the heat sink does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is suck up all of the heat. And uh, anyway, just a little FYI. If you can solder before you put stuff on the heat sink, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. happy with those That's better. so yeah fascinating riveting stuff just a little FYI, LEDs don't work backwards. Like you have to get the positive and negative right. They are they are particular about polarity and stuff like that. So Uh, Reese, what do you have now? What kind of saber? I haven't been following the chat, but um, yeah, Brian got that one. Hey, Daddy. Hi, honey. You know where Ian's other backpack went? I do not know where Ian's other backpack went. Ladies and gentlemen, my children. Tomorrow is their first day of school, so they are preparing for that. Yes, I am videoing. Yeah, kids. <laughs> force effects from Toys R Us. Okay. Uh, which which particular force is it? A Kylo or is it uh, like a Vader, Anakin? Um, Luke, any of the other, you know, one of those other force effects ones. Oh, yeah, look at that. Now, I'm going to try and put this whole thing together before I try and pull this thing out again. There's that. Um, let's see.
that, 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 and we'll just work on this one here real quick because, you know, uh, yeah, Mark Hoofman, you're right. Uh, Vader's Vault Blades, which is what I had earlier in this, are excellent. I haven't found a better blade that is made. You can make your own, but um, a pre-made blade that is great. Super even, looks fantastic in photos. Vader's Vault is the way to go for those, um, for sure. Ooh, it's a little tight right there. Easy does it. Easy, easy, gentle. Gotta be gentle with electronics. Would you look at that? Okay. Let me call on something. Would you look at that? Who did this work anyway? Jeez, you would think. You would think I would have thought about that, but no. I had to go and be live streaming to do all of this and then screw it up right on the live stream. So, in case you're wondering, what I did was I forgot my color coding and flipped the negative and positive with these LEDs. Um, don't do that. Keep your color coding straight. I now, since I've done this, I've actually switched up my color coding a little bit and I use a little different uh, setup so that it's a little easier to remember which one goes to positive and which one goes to negative because. I don't like redoing stuff very many times. I actually don't like redoing stuff at all. It's not fun. It's not as fun as you think it is. Fixing up all your work after you get all the way done. go uh, Reese um, Reese asked if I just bought a blade no LEDs with the lightsaber improve yes so you could yeah it's not easy to replace because the blade and the electronics are all together and part of it so be better off just replacing it um, and rebuilding it. You can with the stock with the stock board replacing the LEDs and making it removable blade. You can get quite a considerably brighter blade than the stock string blade that comes with Kylo. Just replacing the LEDs with the board, and that's the tutorial on the Custom Saber Shop forums does that, and um, it's not that hard if you have some basic electronic skills and some soldering skills to do and it doesn't take that long like you could do it in a day um, the uh, where it gets a little harder is when you're doing like a complete rebuild which is what this one was or is there it is. so all right take four five what how many how many times have I tried this now a bunch Thomas if you watch this I do actually know what I'm doing most of the time probably shouldn't have done this on a day where I got the amount of sleep I did, but oh well. There's been an awakening. Have you found it? Yes. Hey, look at that. All right. Now, I'm going to put this thing back together all the way and turn off my soldering iron. You like that? Look how white I look.
right. Put this all back. There's that. I'm going to have a bunch of glue back on. But, let's see. <laughs> Mark asks, what's up with everybody jumping on the string blade bandwagon? I'll show you in a second here. As soon as I get this done, I'll pull my string blade. Uh, it's ugly, and it's just like it was a temporary thing I threw together just to kind of see what they're all about. But, um... So, just FYI, it's definitely, it's not even in a hilt, it's just a bunch of electronics. But, you can see, string blades are, um, I don't know, they're interesting to play with. And they're brighter now, they're, they're and more durable, which is important. So, okay, uh, let's, I'm just going to throw this, this is not a Bader's Vault blade, this is just an old stock Kylo blade that I have sitting around. Then I'm going to put in here... Whoops. Server traps. Yeah, let's see. I'll show you the dark side. And then we'll put this in here so y'all can see it in all of its beauty. I'll do that. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So there's the deep red. Here's the... Regular red. Can you see a difference? I can't really tell if you can or not. Well, you can see it on the sides of my face. It's more orange over here, more red, purple on this side. So, that's that's the difference. Thomas, your saber's done. i got to glue a couple things on, and then I'll be shipping it back to you. Be in touch soon. Um, yeah, so string blade. Let me show you the string blade real quick because why not? This out. Um, get this stuff put away. Where's my other? There it is. Okay. So here's my string blade setup. So this is a Prism 5.1 as compared to a, uh, oh shoot, I don't have one sitting around. I thought I had a spark sitting around here. Uh, I don't. Anyway, this is a Prism 5.1. Great board. Great, great, great board. My speaker tube. This is like this so, so, so official way to do this too. It's, it's brilliant. Oh my God. Um, it has a rice port on it so I can hook it up to a computer and program it on the fly which is really cool um, the rice port is a brilliant 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 idea so this is the string blade which has the Adafruit strips skinny strips that go in I just stick them in here and then yeah pretty much just like that and then I need to oh, Hold on, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there, I promise. Uh, I don't have a, yeah, I don't, okay, that's fine. So, nothing special on this right now, just the just the, the string blade. Um, you know what, I should show you the difference here too, between this and this, because there's a difference. So here's the big thing with string blades, and the big, uh, the reason why people are kind of jumping on them now is with this, you lose the scrolling effect, right? Let me, uh... So you lose the scrolling effect, which basically is this right here, or not this, but, um, so this is the scrolling effect here. Sorry about those clashes. 
I should probably hook this into something so it doesn't do that. Uh, where's that? There it is. That's it. Anyway, so here's here's the regular deep red, right? Looks great, um, but it's just on off. It fades on, fades off. So the string blade is a little bit nicer because it does this. And that. And then this. Clash. So there you go. That's the difference between a regular blade and a string blade. Um, the string blade is uh, now. Oh, there we go. Hold on. I'm gonna turn the lights on. So the nice thing about string blades now is they're they're super bright. Obviously, this one is insanely bright, um, even compared to the Tricre. They do use well this this style, the Adafruit style, uses more power, quite a bit more power. So I'm going to use uh, when I build this saber, which will probably be my personal Vader saber. I'm going to use a 26 650, which is 5200 milliamps, or I'll build a battery pack using two 18650s together to make uh, at 3400 milliamps each to make um, 6800 milliamps, so that I have enough power to actually run it for a while. Uh, let's see, Mark. Um, yeah, they are and they aren't. There's trade-offs to both. So uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna set it up with a quick connect and disconnect so I can take the blade on and off just like you would an LED blade. Um, I'm still working on that. And then uh, the nice thing is it does the, you can have any color in the blade because it's red, green, blue, obviously, and then it does a really super bright white flash on clash. The other nice thing is that it's totally even from end to tip. The, there's no dimming in brightness at all which there is a little bit even with the Vader's vault blade there's just a tiny bit up in the middle you you get a little bit dimmer um the string blades that are coming out now are brighter than a tricree led marginally so and obviously they, there's some trade-offs you use a lot more power and um but durability wise they're almost as durable i wouldn't recommend it for heavy dueling but an occasional tap here and there is not going to be a big deal uh, they do. They look really, really good in person. It's so bright, and you, I mean, you could see it here when it's like flashing white. It's it's intense white. It's really, really white. And that's because to get white with LEDs, you're combining all three colors: red, green, and blue. So you have all three LEDs along the entire length of the blade are are flashing full power all at once. It's a lot of light. Um, so yeah. We'll we'll see how that goes. I'm excited about it. There's some there's some pretty cool. Um, oh, and then the other thing that it does, which is cool, with the prism is the blaster block. So instead of like when you pretend like you're blocking blaster by hitting an aux button and you and the blade flashes, it flashes, but it's localized. So you could see it where it was like flashing in one area, and then it would flat. You know, so that I never really used that feature. It's really cool, but I've never really used it. Um, I've never really used the blaster block feature at all. The flash on clash and the scrolling out and back effects are what I'm after. And it's it's marginally brighter than a Tricree. So once I get it set up uh, with the quick disconnect in a Vader Hilt, then um, I'm sure I'll be doing a whole video about it or live streaming it or something. But it's cool. It's fun to play with. Uh, yeah, so... You found, Mark Hoofman found someone who could 3D print an ROTS Vader hilt. We're going to figure out who can print a solid metal hilt like aluminum or steel and getting metal parts chrome plated. Awesome. Congrats. That's fantastic because ROTS hilts are very, very hard to find. Uh, 
and see you have an unopened Weller iron. Should you return it and get the variable temp one right away? Um, a variable temp one, temp one is great. I'll show you what I'm using. Um, I've used Weller too. This is a Heiko uh, 8 something, 888D. So it has basically, this is a digital control here and I can set the temperature exactly. Um, the Weller, the Weller variable temp ones are, uh, have a dial or whatever are great. Using variable temp is fantastic and having a base station like this one is great because it has more power and it tends to keep the, uh, the iron, the soldering tip, the same temperature. It doesn't, like you don't have to wait for it to heat back up like some of the cheaper ones. It, it, it keeps it hot, which is great. Keeps it really um, stable. So it's nice for working on electronics when you can set your temperature uh, right where you want it. So you can either um, solder quickly because it's hot enough to work really fast or it's um, you know if you if you can't go above a certain temperature with certain components you can set it below that temperature and keep it there so hopefully that answers your question hey Tyler so that's that's it that's all I was gonna do today um, just wanted to get that that LED switched out on that um, um, Kylo because the gentleman that I did it for after he saw the deep red in my saber he decided he wanted to switch out for deep red in his Kylo so it's all switched out now the trade-off is going to be he probably lost 15 minutes of runtime like he went for an hour and 15 before now he's probably down to about an hour of runtime on a single battery charge because of the um, the extra it's running three deep red cry try deep red crease in the main blade now instead of two regular red just to I uh, keep it as bright as possible so anyway uh, Tyler asks within my workstation how many lightsabers have I done now I don't know 100 something maybe I haven't really kept track depends on how many times you consider my rebuilds too on my personal saber which I've redone a lot now more times than I care to admit uh, anyway yeah so there you go I'm gonna sign off the live stream now thanks for watching thanks for supporting this channel uh, we'll be live streaming tomorrow night with our Kylo here in the Alaska and outpost Sarah she's gonna be joining me tomorrow night at 7 Alaska time or so tune in about then and then uh, the next big thing you'll see is probably footage from the fair because Wednesday we'll be at the fair all day. So that'll be the next big vlog sort of style thing you'll see. Well, no, actually, I've got another one that I'm working on editing now that you'll see on Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday or sometime like that. Once I get it all edited and put together, you'll see the, the fair one. Um, so bye, Tyler. Uh, thanks, everybody who tuned in. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Hope you enjoyed all that tense uh, moments of me trying to troubleshoot the saber only to realize that I made a simple mistake and reverse the positives and negatives. But uh, but I will say that jumper between um, between C2 and the C4 pad were, was not good. So I'm glad I replaced that. It, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't the best. Anyway. Um, so... See you all again soon, tomorrow night on the stream. And until then, have a great day, and I'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers.